so we actually get some Christmas gifts for you. Yeah, While I do that, you. he's gonna ask you guys some questions too. Alright, cool. Okay. Yes. I'd like to know on your the your first song on your record, uh, Dying's Our Latest Fashion, is called The Guillotine. Mm -hmm. okay. I also uh, have a song on your new album, This War is Ours, that is called This War is Ours, The Guillotine Part 2. Yeah. And what are those similarities in the name? Um, I don't know, it's just like the you know, when we were at the guillotine one, like, I don't know, we just were really all about it, thought it was great. Oh, cool, but and we just always thought about doing like a part two yeah, to what, it, just thought it was like is, a cool concept to do that. What is so, yeah. Are there any, any similarities in the song structure or stuff? Um, yeah, like they are slightly similar. Wow. Yeah, they are, like we did that on purpose. Never tried you know? But I mean, the coolest interview I've ever took in my life. <laughs> like it? Oh, I love it. This, yeah, this is my new favorite Jaeger mixture. And I like Jaeger. Uh, I don't know. And now I like it again. What is that? It's like Odell! What? Instead of Red Bull on the rider, we need chocolate milk and Jaeger, dude. Is that chocolate milk? Yeah, it it is. looks like chocolate milk, dude. Try this, it's good. Dude. You have to try it. Try it. Jaeger and chocolate milk. Will you finish answering Jaeger the question? Milk, you want me to finish dude. it? Do it, do it, man. Anyways, they had said in an interview that the fans really liked the song, so they said that there was going to be a part two. So when I came in the band, I figured, yeah, yeah, let's this. stay with that promise I'm and, uh, chocolate. I can't do you know, let's write yeah. a part two. Okay. So I started working on part two. No, it's I see. Uh, uh, Josh Todd featured your last single, 10 Miles Wide. Mm -hmm. And uh, why, what, what, what was the reason for this cooperation? Um, it was just like, he came down to the studio, like just heard about us and like, it was just like this idea like, you know, yeah, he heard about our band or whatever and like, they thought it'd be cool like to just meet up and stuff. We met up with him and just we talked to him for a bit outside and he liked what we were about. We liked what he was about and uh, he just like jammed like, you know, just, I don't know, he listened to some of the stuff we were doing and he was like, yeah, I kind of like that. And like, next thing you know, like he's writing lyrics and like he's like getting down with us. He's like, let's go in the studio. Let's go record this. Let's go. The guy's like firing on all cylinders and we're like, fuck yeah, man. Hell yeah. So. Yeah, there's definitely no like. You know, somebody comes in, you start working with them. There's that like embarrassing moment and the shyness that you have going on, and he just, he just came in, swinging. Yeah. And it was like, oh, all right, man, let's yeah. do it. Because it's always like a little intimidating with like yeah. an artist of that caliber. Like, you don't know if he's gonna like your ideas or like you don't know if you're gonna vibe well together. But he was just super easy to get along with. Cool guy. Just like, dude, seriously, he was like, just like hanging out with us. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, what did your parents say when you offered them, okay, I'm, we're starting a musician career, we're having mm. our first tours, we're recording a new album, so what the, did they say to you? Um, well, am I interrupting you? No, go ahead, <laughs> say, no, no, you I guys, have no, go ahead, man. My mom, I thought you were going to interrupt me. No. My mom, well, anyway. <laughs> my mom said, uh, my mom said, go for it, man. My mom was stoked. She was like, you know what, you only live one life. She's like, there's tons of kids and tons of people that are your age and older that would, you know, give anything to be in your shoes. So, you know what? A lot of people have dreams and not many people get to live them, so do it, live it up. Okay. That's My cool. parents were yeah. pissed. Really? Yeah, they, they didn't like mm -hmm. it at all. I did a lot of a lot of running away from home, a lot of a lot of disciplinary things I had to go through and then eventually just dropped out of school as soon as I turned 18 and decided to go do it on my own. Okay. And uh now they're proud of me. <laughs> I can imagine. They're so proud now. Yeah, my parents were always supportive. We used to practice in my garage. My dad would like make my garage soundproof and stuff, and uh, like they, my parents would cook us food and stuff. Like they were, they were like the whole band's parents and everything. They were really cool, really supportive, and it just kind of sucked though because they used to live in Las Vegas and we lived in another part of the country and moved to Las Vegas. And I left on my first tour. I came back a couple weeks later and they had already moved back. So it was kind of like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> they're, I, guess, I guess they're kind of like, you're going to make it, so okay. later. <laughs> Dude. But they were very supportive, though. Okay. And do you know the movie 2012 by Ronald Emmerich? I haven't seen it. Well, there's under I haven't seen it yet. Stuff. Didn't you see it? Yeah, no, I haven't seen it. Oh, I know, cool I special effects, but actually that's not worth seeing it. But we like to know. Imagine that you have your last day to live. What would you do? December 20th. My la what would I do on my last day to live? I would see my mom for a little bit, say hi to her, hang out, eat some food, see my little brother, and then 
have sex as much as I could, <laughs> probably <laughs> with uh, my girlfriend, and uh, go out with a bang, dude. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. if, it, if it literally, I knew the world was ending, I would give a fuck. I would try to get as hold of as many like family members as I could, That's as many friends as possible. Have a shit ton of sex. I would get the person fucked I want, up and then I would go I would and get just get fucked, fucked up. <laughs> Dude, like, I don't uh, even care. All right, it's almost <laughs> December twenty fifth, two thousand twelve. Yeah. Just give me the bottle, man. Puking. <laughs> uh, gotta drink more. Gotta drink more. I would just start. I'd I'd I want to pass out. Mm -hmm. I'd be blacked out, and I would not even remember the end of the world. Later that night, I'd be dead. Panic going around. I'm just We're passed out in the middle of the street. We gotta get out of here, the cop is coming. I'm just in the middle of the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> just going out peacefully, man. Me, That's what I, would I would, I'd play a show, dude. Fuck it. <laughs> honestly. Dude. Play a show and be Answer the soundtrack. Honestly. It's a the soundtrack. end of the damn world. No, no one's, one's watching a show. show. No one's watching a show. Dude, I'm gonna be, I wanna be the soundtrack to the apocalypse. Okay, that sounds pretty epic. All right, Robert's right? gonna be those yeah. violinists on Titanic. You That's know the me. Titanic movie? They just keep on playing while the ship's going down. Probably well, it'll be the drummer. The, the earthquakes are happening. Except you guys won't play with me. No, I can play with you, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna be passed out drunk. I just oh. answered it before you did. You know what I'm gonna be doing. I honestly. You could play the drums if you want. I just play. That's what I enjoy doing in life. So that's what I would do with my last day. I think he's full of shit I myself. Shit but too. Well, I mean, if a building's right there collapsing, I'm gonna shots, start running, man. bro. You know? <laughs> Fuck that. I don't know. You just start. You gonna pick up your drum set and start running, man? No, just the Obviously snare. the building's gonna collapse around you, it's the end of the damn world. Alright, bro. So you're gonna be worried about sitting there taking shots, dude, while the fucking sky is falling? Yes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you guys really like him, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship. It is. This is business. It's like how, <laughs> how when you're growing up and you're, you're like you're both brothers. Yeah, so it's like how a, an older like a brother, brother tricks their younger brother, yeah. yeah. I feel like a brotherly bond. Max, Max hates me, but then at the end of the night, we're sitting up talking, and he loves me, and he always tries to give me you, a dude. hug. Yeah. I'm just like. You guys want to trade your seats, man? Well, me and me and Robert go back, dude. Like me and Robert go way back. I've known Robert since he was like 14, so it's like got a lot, of, got a lot of time with this guy, man. Yeah. I love you, man. See me grow I fucking up, love man. You, dude. See me. Yeah, I have. See me go from a little see boy. You literally, watch you grow up, dude. Sprout up like a little cabbage patch, kid, man. Yeah. I'm <laughs> And now the last words to the audience are yours. <laughs> yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for being interested in our musical project, our endeavors. Good night and fucking Try Yeager and Chocolate Bill. <laughs> Merry fucking Christmas. <laughs>